Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I am really excited to make this video around home. It feels like an especially poignant topic right now when many of us are homebound and are doing self-quarantining. Uh, if you're new to this channel, my name is Tumi. I am a medical doctor and a dancer and a poet, and I love making videos around holistic health, minimalism, raw veganism, plant-based living, and dance. And if any of that is of interest to you, consider subscribing down below. And um, let's get into this video. I have a membership program that is that consists of incredible human beings from around the world. And every month, they have the opportunity to get their questions on life and health um, answered by me in a Q&A video. And this month, one of the members sent in a question that I thought was so beautiful and again, poignant and timely. And the member was gracious enough to share the question and my answer to this question, which is usually just exclusive to the members with everyone, with you all. So I want to share with you the question and I'm going to answer the question today in this video all around home and here's the question what does home mean to me she's asking me what does home mean to me especially in the physical realm is it important for you to create a home with things how do you connect practicing voluntary simplicity with creating a beautiful home for yourself and your lovely family she said a lot more, but that's the meat of the question. That's the heart of the question. And she wraps the question up by saying, how can I bring desire of living a more simple and vibrant life together with my fear of letting go of the life I'm used to, which in some aspects is attached to things? So it's a multi-layered question. Um, and usually the questions um, I answer are one question, um, and then I get to go deep into it with the members in the Q&A video. But this question had lots of facets in it. I'm going to answer it as best as I can in a short video today. And I hope that it is of help and support to you. What is home for me? She asked this question also because she's seen a lot of my videos on voluntary simplicity and minimalism that you can check out on this channel. And she also referenced a, a video I did on everything I own fits in this duffel bag. And I will link that video at the end of this video or in the description box below. And it's true, everything I own does fit in a duffel bag. Now it fits in a duffel bag and with my baby's stuff, it fits into a duffel bag and a small little backpack for his cloth diapers. But really nothing's changed ever since we had the baby and we've been renting a beautiful space in the Canary Islands for the past six months. Everything I own still fits in that duffel bag. So how do I keep being minimalist while creating a home that I love? What is home for me? I did a dance and I wrote a poem and created a dance from the poem. I create healing dances and poem dances, dances that are crafted from my original poetry. And I created this poem dance years ago, even before I was uploading regularly on YouTube. If I can find that video, I will put that in the description box below, you can check it out. But the poem was called, I am home, because that was the answer, and that is the answer to this question. I, my body, my spirit is my home. My first trip was when I was about two months old. My beautiful mother had me, she's Nigerian, and she had me while she was in America. And two months later, when I was very little, at two months old, we boarded a plane and went back to Nigeria, where I then spent the rest of my childhood, up till about age 12, in Nigeria, before we came back as a family to America. My point is, I started traveling internationally very, very early on in my life. And I've traveled a lot in my life, and I've been blessed to travel and do work, volunteer work, volunteer medical work, um, paid medical work, paid dance work all around the world. For the past five plus years, me and my sweetheart have been living on the road and traveling throughout the world without a home of our own to root down in. 
now we're basically based in the Canary Islands, which we love. But what I found through traveling this way is I am my home. The places I stay can look different. Most of the time we were in an Airbnb or in a family member's home or camping. Whether it was a tent, a five-star hotel, a humble hut, um, a loved one's bedroom, it didn't matter what the home looked like. The home was really with me. And that's what I've really found through the years. And that's actually helped my voluntary simplicity minimalist journey to understand that it's not the furniture or the things that make my home, that it's my home of my body, of my spirit. And that's why I actually spend most of my time and my resources honoring the body and the spirit that's me, honoring this home through meditation, through prayer, through movement and dance, through feeding my body the best food that I know is on the planet to give it. So when we begin with the idea that we, the vessels in our, of our body and the vessels of our mind and spirit are our true home, it becomes a lot easier to let go of stuff because we're not so attached to stuff defining our home. I hope that makes sense. That being said, Beauty is so important to me. And having a physical space that is beautiful means very much to me. It calms my spirit. It pleases my eye. It uplifts my heart. And I feel like it also uplifts the hearts of my family and those with whom I live. So that being said, while being minimalist, it's really always important to me to have a few things, essential things that I feel like might not be essential in the, in the sense that I won't die if I don't have them, but again, they bring beauty to my physical space. Some of these things include having essential oils that I can burn and give off a beautiful scent, having um, some sentimental jewelry that I will hang in different places in the home. And when I look at that, I'm reminded of the loved one that gave me, that gifted me that jewel. Right now I have my coral necklace from my, from my father, some beautiful earrings from my mom, and I have that out in the space so I can always see that. And it brings again, joy and beauty to the space. What else to share around this topic? I also wanna say that what has also helped me to let go of stuff around the home while keeping the home feeling like a sanctuary and feeling homely and um, homely in the beautiful sense is to bring nature into my physical space and i love bringing nature in because nature always reminds me that things are ever changing so in the winter time i brought in pine cones into our living space because we live by a pine forest i brought in pine cones i brought in pine needles and that's those were our christmas holiday decorations now it's beautiful springtime and I'm bringing in the flowers from the trees, the almond flowers that are dropping from the trees. And that now is a decoration for our home. I always have plants available. We have a spider plant just off the camera here that always brings oxygen and beauty into our bedroom space, which is where I'm living, which is where I'm, I'm doing this video right now. So I think bringing nature elements is a, a very simple way of beautifying your physical space without it being something that you have to stick with always because nature, again, is always changing. So when those pine, when that pine cone got old, those pine needles shriveled, I made a beautiful pine tea and then I let it go into nature. I composted it and brought in another element in from nature with a turn of the seasons. So this is how I also do that some practical ways of how I beautify the home without buying more stuff. I do wanna make a note about decluttering. I think it's really important um, for me, I will speak for myself, to again, let go of so much stuff. And the way I was able to do so, one of the tips I have that I talk about in my book, Delicious Healing, is taking care, taking pictures of sentimental items that I'm ready to now let go of. 
this did not resonate so much with this particular person who's asking the question, but it might resonate for one of you. I remember having this beautiful dress that I loved, but I knew it was time to let it go. So I took a picture of it to remind myself of it, and then I let it go. That's been really helpful for me. But if that doesn't resonate with you, another thing you can do that I borrow from Marie Kondo is the idea of, again, saying thank you to the item and then letting it go. You may not need to take a picture of it. Don't take a picture of it if you don't resonate with that. But you can say thank you to that item, that item of sentiment, of sentiment and then let it go. I think this is really a beautiful practice and what I've incorporated now into my letting go process of things. I also want to say that um, another thing that can be very helpful for letting go of things is the understanding that we will always remember that thing. Nobody will take away from you the memory of that thing and more importantly the memories that are associated with that thing because many times it's not the thing we're attached to or that we we want to hold on to it's the memories we made with that thing with that dress my wedding dress i remember and now i sold that wedding dress and i don't miss it at all because i have incredible memories and i know that that cannot be taken away from me and i also have beautiful pictures of that dress and me in it but reminding yourself that you will always have the memories and the imagination of those things that will never be taken away from you. That I think makes the process of letting go of what no longer serves that much easier. I'm gonna take a look at my notes to make sure I haven't forgotten anything I wanna share. Yeah. So sourcing beauty from nature, bringing in elements of nature to beautify your space. And the last thing I wanna say is envision, visualize. I talk a lot about this with my members in my membership program, the beauty and the importance of envisioning in all areas of your life, but definitely when it comes to your physical space. What do you visualize your desired home, the home of your dreams to look like? Is it a healing home? Is it a beautiful home? Is it a home of simplicity? And what, what in that space can you infuse, can you put in to infuse it with the vision you have? Write a word that describes your home. Healing, beautiful, simple, inspiring. Whatever word that comes in. And then think about how you can um, create that word, make that word into reality in your home. And that will also help you, <clears throat> excuse me, guide what it is you want to keep and what it is you want to let go. So that when you pick up objects and things and you say, do I want to let this go? Do I want to keep this? Go back to that word, that image, that vision of your desired home. And it will make that process of letting go and decluttering that much easier. So I think that's a lot to share. Um, if you're interested in the membership program, please check the link down below. I'll leave a link to the membership down below. Um, it's an incredible group of people and I'm honored to be part of that. And again, questions get answered every month um, as well as much more. You get healing dances and meditations from me as well as motivation, accountability in terms of creating your delicious life. That's why I call the membership program Your Delicious Life. I hope that this topic around home was of resonance to you. I hope that um, what I shared was of value to you. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody you think might benefit. Subscribe if that resonates with you. And I send you so much love wherever you might be wherever you call home, remembering, reminding you that your true home is right here, is your body and your spirit. Start with that, honor that every single day. Take care.